we talked earlier about, and we're talking about newspapers and news and content, mm -hmm. what's, what's wrong with the news today, or is, um, what's, your, what's your view mm -hmm. on the content that's being produced today? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's, of course, greatly expanded. You know. In the print title, you might get a thousand letters uh, a week, but you only have space for publishing two or three letters to the editor. Yes. Uh, now, online, all of the people who want to communicate mm -hmm. to you can do so. So you have a huge increase in content that comes mm -hmm. out of your audience, which has never happened in, in print. Mm -hmm. And that content is often very insightful, you know, the, uh, adding additional ideas or viewpoints. Mm -hmm. So it increases the reader's experience uh, uh, dramatically. Is that, then, so that's a good thing? Yeah, that's good. And okay. then all the people who might send, you know, want to have blogs on that subject that your um, website is covering is, is going well. So okay. But you don't think there's a proliferation of too much opinion? And and, and maybe not enough of what they would consider objective journalism or investigative journalism? Well, it's important to get enough you know, sort of factual. Uh, we, we, we have 2,200 uh, reporters who are out there gathering facts all over the world. Right. And so we can you know, give the first time reporting of breaking news. Mm -hmm. um, and that uh, draws a lot of people to us. If you want to hear it first about information technology, it's probably on one of the IDG uh, websites. And then the people who want to give uh, blogs and opinions or comment reaction to that breaking news tend yeah. to want to come and say, oh, if we, we know that people interested have come here first because it's where the news broke, so we'll put our, our comment or blog on that same uh, site. So let's talk about your tech events. You hold, mm -hmm. what, 1,200 events yes, around the right. world? Mm -hmm. that, that's amazing, including the popular demo event. Yes, we do. And uh, are you offering a million dollars now for a demo? Is that it uh, for the for winner? The winner, we give a million dollars. Yeah, wow. A million dollars uh, uh, for purchase of uh, advertising and promotional services. Mm -hmm. Oh, it would, it, for, in, the, in the form of advertising? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I it's see. It's a million dollar credit towards buying IDG services. What are your more profitable events? Mm -hmm. it, which ones? Well, we do uh, demos, um, profitable. We do Macworld, uh, that's uh, profitable. We have the E3 show, um, the big game show in Los Angeles, that's quite yeah. uh, profitable. We produce a, uh, a show called the High Tech Fair in Sinjin, uh, which has 400,000 attendees, and that's uh, very, uh, very profitable. And we do a lot of shows on open source and Linux, yeah. and we do shows on security. How has MacWorld? Um, how has MacWorld affected? This is the first year without Apple. Mm -hmm. So how is there some reports about you know Apple not being there really makes it a very different event. Well, when Apple was there, they, they were very restrictive about who could, um, uh, who could exhibit because mm -hmm. they didn't want any direct competitors to exhibit. Mm -hmm. uh, with Apple not being there, then we were able to op open the floor to, to things that the Mac enthusiasts uh, were interested to see that they normally didn't get to see in Macworld Exposition. Did so you get the same audience attend? Did you get the same yeah, number we, of people? Yeah, we, we got 35,000 people who came, which is about the same as the prior year. And they loved the show because uh, we had lots of new iPhone applications that they could you know, buy and try and actually buy right now, download immediately yeah. on the floor of the show. Uh, so we, uh, when we did a post-show evaluation of the audience, they all said it was a great experience, better than I thought, and uh, you know, we've got to make this every year, the summit meeting for the Mac uh, enthusiasts. What, what does that bring in? What is the revenue for that for MacWorld? Uh, mm -hmm. which, what's the most? What's the one that drives the most revenue? Your, your uh, well, the, re uh, the largest one would be the uh, Electronic Entertainment Expo. And what does that uh, bring in? Because it's uh, that's about twenty-five million dollar. That's uh, twenty-five event. million yeah. dollars that mm -hmm. you gross. Right, and uh, the, the MacWorld is more like uh, f uh, probably uh, fourteen or fifteen million dollars. And what mm -hmm. about demo? Uh, demo, uh, I would say, is more in the four or five million dollar uh, level. Oh, that's mm -hmm. pretty good. Mm -hmm. why, did, why did you raise prices for entrepreneurs? Did you, you did that for demo recently in the past couple of years, I think? Uh, well, no, we always charge the demonstrator uh, Oh, I thought price. you charged them higher for some mm, reason. No, I don't think it, the, no, the, okay. price, the price uh, increased. I think it was kept the same. What's mm -hmm. your view, or how was your, how was IDG affected with the recession and, and the, the conferences? How did that affect mm -hmm. the conference business, yeah. your conference business? Well, it was interesting. Uh, people actually had more need to meet and discuss with their colleagues because of right. the stress caused by the economic downturn. But they were uh, inhibited from flying out to Las Vegas for a week, you know, thinking that's probably not the right 
use of money right. when, when everyone else is uh, having a, a tighten their belt. So we yeah, found that the, uh, the uh, local s events uh, went, uh, we were up two or three times the number of attendees when we did the event in Boston or New York or Washington or Houston or San Francisco. So we actually had an overall gain in the numbers of people coming to our events, but they tend to do what we call the road shows or road tours where we'd take the event and break it up into five cities and invite people to and come to the city those. Yeah, closer to them. And they liked it because then they met people in their own metro area and they could right. talk about you know, what's happening with uh, the cut budget cuts in our city and education yeah. being affected and what's happening with medical care. So they could uh, really talk about the economic problems in their own metro area as well as you know, talk about the technology. How has the event industry changed since you launched ID, mm -hmm. well, IDC at the time mm -hmm. in 1964? Mm -hmm. You had an event with 70 people. Mm -hmm. And yeah. now I don't know which, which, uh, what uh, your, uh, your largest event yeah, in and well, what it draws in, but how well, has the largest event? one is now 400,000 people. Okay, 400,000 people. To a high-tech fair in, uh, in, in Shenzhen. Um, oh. Well, well uh, I think we, when I had the first event, we had you know, about 60 people. And uh, when I talked to the people in Serbia, you know, what they, part of it they liked the best, they mm -hmm. said you know, the content was great, but they felt the great value was meeting the other attendees and mm -hmm. socializing mm -hmm. with the other attendees. So we right. said, boy, that's a, a message or uh, you know, that we make that a key part of the process that we would um, you know, carefully select the people to invite so that they would have equal rank and equal status and, and find you know, a great deal of, of social networking and bonding uh, together. Right. So, so that hasn't really changed mm -hmm. though since 1964 and even though you have the internet you found that mm -hmm. people still actually yeah, want to still, go. Well people have an anxiety if they go to an event and they don't know who the audience is going to be they're afraid you know right. that they will be uh, to the highest ranking person there and everyone will be bothering them or that they'll be uh, one of lower ranking people and then they'll feel out of place so they like to know that the audience being assembled are peer group people. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we actually created a whole family of publications that are right job title, like the CIO magazine mm -hmm. or, and the chief security officer magazine, the CSO, and we have a CFO, chief financial officer, and uh, so and we have a CEO magazines. So those run great conferences because everybody knows who you know, they're going to have the same job title when they come to the uh, conference. Right, yeah. right, right. And then we've taken those uh, groups and formed uh, executive councils uh, for a CIA group. We have over 600 people in an executive count, uh, council which discusses how to uh, get the industry to be more responsive to the needs, testifies in front of Congress for you know, more um, uh, incentives for acquiring technology. Mm -hmm. And um, and each of us at each pay you know, twenty five or thirty thousand dollars a year to be a member, so it's a, a very mm -hmm. nice um, you know, a, a revenue source because it's all from the users, uh, mm -hmm. not depending on advertising or marketing expenditures. Yes.